Uh, we are supporting some of the best researchers and innovators in Europe. A bit uh, later, I will present uh, something that is uh, called uh, the ERA chairs, which some of you might have heard of that might be interesting for some research organizations. But there are certain programs that, uh, that are uh, highly supportive of the research. And uh, as uh, we heard previously, we are not just talking about uh, the current uh, last uh, poll, uh, which is going to be, uh, to be published uh, uh, tomorrow officially and was adopted by the Commission uh, today. Uh, we are actually uh, wanting to make a smooth transition to the next uh, so-called FP8, which is not going to be FP8, because it will be called Horizon 2020. So the research framework, research program that will cover the period from 2014 uh, to 2020, and where yeah, we are, uh, when we uh, envisage to have even more funds than we did in FP7, for example, the total of FP7 was approximately 55 uh, billion euros, while the Commission last year proposed for the Horizon 2020 uh, to have uh, 80 billion uh, euros available, so that is quite, quite a significant e increase. Uh, what is also what we are also uh, working on and looking into an important thing is to make uh, the life of the researchers easier. Uh, which is definitely an important uh, thing to do. Simplification of the rules, more straightforward procedures, less of, uh, of reporting, so let's say sticking to the reporting that is really needed. So we're actually uh, trying to make uh, something that will really attract uh, the researchers to, to benefit and to apply uh, for this opportunity in, in, the, in the work uh, programs. As mentioned, uh, the, this whole package uh, was decided by the Commission uh, today. It is uh, 8.1 billion stimulus for growth and jobs, the highest ever that we have in the, in the, uh, uh, in the framework uh, in this FP7 research uh, framework program. It's supporting Euro's best researchers and innovators uh, through, uh, uh, through certain measures that I will present a bit later. Uh, officially, it will be the text will be available uh, uh, tomorrow. So, something for approximately of 50 uh, calls for proposals will be uh, published, and uh, this is the great majority of the calls. Uh, but some of them will still be uh, uh, published in autumn, some that are uh, focusing on uh, digital agenda and information and communication technologies are still coming in the, in the autumn. Uh, deadline for applications will be different. They start from uh, September 2012 and they go on into uh, 2013, so all of that will be, uh, become available as of, as of tomorrow. Let's talk a bit about the figures, uh, what is hidden behind uh, this 8.1 billion. So the whole EU uh, research budget is actually 10.8 uh, billion euros, and the difference between these two figures, 10.8 and 8.1, are certain uh, things that are not included in this current work program. That would, for example, be uh, uh, close to billion for uh, Euratom energy research, so uh, the nuclear part of, of uh, certain part of the nuclear uh, research, uh, joint research center activities, uh, and, and some other things. Uh, what is most uh, Interesting uh, from uh, for you is the cooperation teams. So the, the actual teams like energy, transport, uh, health, uh, environment, etc., uh, for which there will be 4.8 uh, billion funds available, and all of that uh, money is actually going to the actual beneficiaries. So this is after the projects are selected. 100% of uh, this amount are going to uh, participating organizations who proposed uh, the, the best uh, projects. As you can see on the other side, on the outputs, there is a big output that we are expecting uh, from these figures to happen. Uh, we are uh, planning to uh, more, more than 1,300 research projects to be funded across Europe and beyond. Um, with some 15,500 participations, uh, so organizations of different nature to be participating. 
and uh, looking uh, over the next uh, 15 years, we believe that this initial investment of 8.1 billion that we are investing today, that there will be contributing an additional GDP of 75 billion euros over the next 15 years, creating also 210,000 new jobs. So we are really talking about major impacts that this money can have. There is one thing I need to state uh, here as well. 8.1 billion is not just 8.1 billion euros because the average effect of this uh, with 0 0.74 as this envisaged is actually bringing uh, what we expect when uh, the public sector, uh, firstly the private sector of course, and also the public sector, public uh, laboratories for example, when they add their part of financing to uh, what the Commission is, uh, is uh, uh, proposing, uh, we get to almost 14 uh, billion euros. So it's not just the money the Commission is uh, bringing in, but also the money that is attractive because the private sector and certain public sector uh, becomes interested in developing uh, the initiatives. As the I mentioned previously, 1.2 billion is uh, envisaged for various measures, uh, benefiting about 4,000 SMEs. Um, ERC, uh, European Research Council, and Marie Skodowska uh, Korean actions. So, uh, ERC, in terms of uh, financing the uh, frontier research in the most important areas with very significant amounts of money, uh, the grants that can go over uh, 3, million, uh, 3 million euros. Uh, they are uh, aimed, for example, at uh, finding the cures for, for the, for the uh, most dangerous uh, diseases that we are financing and a lot of other challenges uh, that we have. And Maria Skodowska Korea uh, actions, which is uh, financing the uh, training of the researcher as well as the mobility, which is very important, mobility of the researchers across Europe, exchanging the ideas, uh, bringing added value by uh, uh, taking from one country what the country is good at and taking it to the, uh, another country and, and the third one and out of that coming something which no one would be able to, to, uh, to do uh, single-handed, this is, this is really important. So international dimensions is really important that we uh, put a lot of focus on that. And the last one, uh, research uh, sharing uh, financing uh, facility with 150 uh, million euros which are going to be uh, guarantees, uh, which will make, we are estimating, approximately 1 billion euros of loans available to the, to the SMEs, small and medium size companies. Who is the target? I believe most of you who are in this room today would be able to find uh, yourself somewhere among this, uh, this uh, beneficiaries, current and future ones. So it's universities, it's other non-profit research organizations, public authorities as well, large industries, definitely important and vital, vital to be participating there, just as much as there are SMEs with their own creativity that they can bring to the table, and finance and financial institutions that make also this uh, possible. We, as I mentioned a bit previously, are going to be focusing on the key challenges. So uh, we are not going to be uh, spreading uh, very small amounts of money to very large uh, number of very different activities, although we do cover a huge number of activities. But still, for us it is important that we will focus on the key, key challenges, key problems that society is facing today. Uh, here you have uh, stated some of them, uh, oceans of the future, for example. I know, uh, I know that uh, Latvia was uh, uh, successfully participating in my ocean uh, project. Uh, Latvia's Universitat uh, was the partner uh, with uh, many other countries in a project that, were, that, uh, that was that lasted till uh, this year and that was gathering uh, the information on the state of the state of the oceans, on the temperature, on the currents, on the uh, ice, uh, ice in the sea, etc. Uh, so uh, I'm definitely sure that there are uh, areas which you might find interesting and where you would be able to 
uh, present uh, good proposals in also based on the experiences that you obviously successfully have. Uh, then it's uh, water management, uh, better use of raw materials, uh, uh, smart cities that uh, I'll present a bit, a bit later, uh, secure clean and efficient energy, there is also improving delivery of public sector services like economic modeling, uh, things that can, happen, that can help us uh, uh, weather better through the current economic uh, crisis, know better what needs to be done, what is active uh, to be done. Uh, brain research with the aging population, uh, Alzheimer's diseases, and uh, other other uh, other challenges for the for the older society, uh, which do uh, also cost a lot of public uh, public financing, and where uh, certain uh, progress uh, will definitely uh, make lives better for all of us. Antimicrobial resistance, the viruses are getting uh, more and more resistant, causing more and more uh, damage in lives, in cost to the economy. So a lot of money is invested there. And bioresource efficiency as well. So uh, using our uh, land, water, etc. for producing uh, healthy food, yes, for example. Previously, I mentioned the uh, SMEs with uh, 1.2 billion package for uh, different uh, activities in cooperation. Uh, so, in those uh, teams that I, that I mentioned previously, environment, energy, health, etc., around uh, close to 1 billion is allocated to support SMEs. And in capacities, uh, the other part of the framework program. Uh, there is also 252 million earmarked for research for the benefit of SMEs, uh, which is actually a demonstration that uh, bring, uh, uh, bring uh, the results uh, to, to the market. <coughs> One important thing is actually a covering or coverage of the overall innovation cycle. So all different phases that lead to actual uh, uh, adoption of the market, commercialization of, of what the research produces. So we do not uh, wish to have uh, excellent uh, research which does not find its way into the real applications in the real time world, really benefiting all of us. And this is, this is an important part that we need to stress. Uh, risk sharing finance facility I mentioned uh, previously, so uh, making the SMEs possible to have access to uh, much higher loans than previously because of the guarantee, guarantee uh, found uh, that is available for this purpose. Special focus on, on innovation. So it doesn't matter if they are EU on, or uh, results of the coming from the European Union or uh, coming outside of the European uh, Union. Uh, five teams are going to be, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, tackled here. So these are uh, nanotechnologies, uh, materials, and new production methods, uh, health, environment, transport, and the team that uh, includes uh, uh, Demonstration projects, uh, where at least 265 million euros will be available in uh, different teams. Among them, security, environment is getting approximately 40 million, transport uh, about 13.5 million, and uh, the team of the foot about 20 million. With uh, the bigger, uh, with the biggest uh, team receiving for the funds under this being energy. Uh, about uh, 191 million euros are foreseen. Uh, for example, uh, the smart cities, uh, which is a very hot topic, if I may say so, uh, currently. So it is actually bringing different technologies uh, together, demonstration of different technologies that are needed for our cities, where uh, the majority of the population already lives, and in the future there will be even higher percentage of population living in the cities. So it's uh, it's about uh, it's about uh, energy efficiency. It's about how to include uh, the renewables into uh, into the production of, of energy that cities are using. It's about urban planning. So it's quite a cross sectorial, cross disciplinary approach uh, that that we want to uh, to uh, 
give opportunity to demonstrate uh, these bordering issues between, between different disciplines and teams. Uh, there are also prizes, for example, for uh, women innovators. It's an important issue. We want to make sure that the gender, gender balance all across Europe is, is respected. Uh, supporting for organizing competitions for innovative learning technology, education in all forms or anything that helps people, have, helps having better skilled uh, force in Europe is, is important and we appreciate it. Uh, European Prize for Innovation in Public Administration as well. We know it is not just the business, uh, it's not just the private sector that needs to adapt. To adapt. It's also the public sector that needs to be uh, very responsibly using uh, the money. And there is also room for innovation in that area. And inducement price uh, for call reminder. Uh, that one is on vaccine technology of 2 million uh, euros because uh, in vaccine the problem is that uh, their transport and storage are really sensitive areas because before the vaccines can be used, especially somewhere in uh, far from, from Europe, but also inside Europe, um, if it's not transported well, if it's not stored well, we can throw it away. So how to tackle this problem of, of having the possibility to actually use the, the vaccine that we have available? Final action on the uh, era chairs, economic research area chairs. About uh, 12 uh, million euros is uh, foreseen for that one. Uh, there will be, uh, there is, it's envisaged to have five of such chairs to build excellence in less developed regions. So in the regions which are not uh, using uh, the effort, as haven't so far used so much of the FP7 available uh, funds. So this is something that is under discussion, but it will go in two uh, stage uh, process. Eventually, the era chairs will actually be physical persons, so the outstanding academics attracted by universities or research institutions who are capable of building, building excellent teams. So, excellent people with also excellent management skills who can gather around themselves excellent people, no matter from where these people come from. So, firstly, it will be uh, in the first uh, round uh, uh, the selection will be made on the basis of which uh, universities or uh, research centers uh, have the capabilities of actually providing the right place to these uh, chairs. And uh, so this means having the right facilities, open access to the post, etc. And in the second, uh, in the second phase, the actual uh, physical people, so outstanding academics, uh, we in, will be uh, selected in a uh, transparent, uh, transparent process. So we know to whom uh, further information is uh, going to be provided on how this will be, uh, how we will proceed with this. So let me provide for the Horizon 2020, the program which will start in after this 2013 call. So. 2014 calls will already be published under the Horizon 2020, promoting excellence wherever it is fine. So the focus will stay just like it was in FP7, the excellence. Although there will be also uh, uh, ensure that there is uh, good and even better coordination also with other programs that are possibly funding uh, the energy research, where the cohesion funds are. Uh, focusing on strategic priorities, as I said, we will not be spreading to everywhere. We will be trying to focus what Europe has unique, what each region has, uh, has of unique, and trying to finance that on the on the on something that can become world scale uh, example. Boosting innovation, as uh, we need growth and jobs. That is the only way for Europe to uh, sustain the current standard, living uh, of standard as we have, and progress further helping firms to move from idea to market. So it's not just researching and developing and then being, for example, out of money because uh, some uh, certain uh, organizations uh, uh, lack financing for that crucial uh, stage when they have done so much work before. But before going to mar market to actually exploit what they have come up with, they need, for example, loans. And 
that is something that I mentioned previously that is going to be available and thus special attention for, for SMEs. What has uh, FB7 provided uh, so far? It started in 2007, it will finish next year in 2013. Uh, 19,000 signed contracts, 79 participating organizations, of which a bit uh, more than 15% from, uh, from uh, SMEs. Uh, 25 uh, billion euros of contributions and uh, tens of thousands of uh, researchers uh, found it uh, directly, so uh, Maurice Kodlowska, Kuri and, uh, uh, and ERC uh, was envisaged by the end of 57 and that includes also uh, five uh, Nobel Prize winners. So we actually do have some excellence in, in our products. Evolution of the framework program from the very beginning uh, to till next year. As you can see, we are uh, faithful to this uh, top political uh, issue on the European agenda, which is the research and innovation. So each year uh, we are providing more funds uh, for the research and, and innovation. So in total, uh, I said uh, there will be about uh, 55 billion available, out of which next year 8.1 for cooperation. Participation uh, for regions, here you can see um, that most of Europe is uh, not uh, hugely diversified, but there are certain centers of excellence where uh, the participation, participation, so a number of organizations participating in the, in the FP7 are higher. And if we conclude uh, by uh, seeing the country profile for Latvia, uh, the R&D intensity target uh, by 2020, uh, very, very challenging one according to what the current situation is, uh, this means to be said, 1.5% uh, of GDP. Uh, total number of participation so far 204, uh, achieving uh, about 21 uh, million euros so far. Uh, 922 applicants, which is 0.28% of EU27. Success rate, as you can see, is uh, 21.8, so it is actually slightly higher than uh, European average, so that is a good, good way to, to go. And if you see total population uh, is 0.4%, uh, and if you compare that one to the previous uh, number of number of applicants, 0.28, so obviously there is more opportunity to apply for more projects than you are currently doing. And obviously you could get more out of it because the success rate is about European Union's average. I'm uh, sure that uh, the creativity is not uh, uh, missing uh, here in this country. Uh, I've seen, for example, uh, uh, I, I Billy Riga is absolutely a beautiful city. I mean, I just see the parks, uh, how they are organized. I mean, it is great. It's really one of the nicest cities. I'm not just saying that to be polite. It's really, really beautiful. Also, the, the, the Baltic singing concert, the concert that was happening here during the weekend, obviously shows that you can work together. So, obviously, there is opportunity for Latvia. And I really do encourage you to, uh, to dare and to actually go for it. Apply for it, there is a good possibility for success. <laughs>